since the dawn of time, humanity has always started to build stuff that is most powerful. But that is quite invalid for stuff that is supposed to sit on top of your lap. I mean, no one would love feeling a blast down there in literal terms. Hey everyone, Mukul here. So it was about time that I decided to shift my major workload to a laptop and enjoy the occasional portability with it. So I chose the Legion 5 Pro Gen 7 laptop as it's quite renowned for its thermal performance. But before I go truly in depth about this laptop, do you wanna know what I really love about it? Is it the hardware? Nope, uh, maybe. The screen? Nope, uh, maybe. The sound from the speakers? Uh, well, definitely not. What I truly love is the fact that they include three years of on-site warranty in the price of the laptop. This could be because of the fact that they have already adjusted the service cost within the price of the laptop, or it could be that they have built the laptop so well that they are themselves very confident about the reliability of the laptop. I mean, your guess is as good as mine. I went with the Ryzen 7 6800H with RTX 3070 and a 32 GB RAM variant, as I really multitask a lot, like a lot and then I constantly fail in all of them. In my kind of workload, the whole memory can be consumed instantly by the many polygons I sometimes use in 3ds Max interface. The GPU was primarily preferred because sometimes I also do a lot of GPU rendering and or make stuff that makes good use of the 8GB VRAM. And also because I occasionally enjoy playing games like Cyberpunk, uh, Counter-Strike Go, Division, etc. The design is pretty simple and plain with just one branding on the top. The storm grey color has a nice finish and no elements of the laptop try to scream anything remotely tacky, except for these many stickers which you can take off if you want to. I mean AMD clearly tried to be pretentious by slapping two of its stickers, uh, but I assume Intel does the same. But I'm pretty sure I'm never going to use Radeon ever for any task when the laptop has an RTX 3070 in it. The vents are on the sides and on the bottom. The legs on the base have a good height for better air circulation when the laptop is placed on a hard surface. I believe except for the keyboard and touchpad area, every other surface on the laptop is aluminium and they have built it very sturdy overall with no weird creaks whatsoever. The lid opens up without lifting the heavy base of the laptop and now as we are talking about the weight of the laptop, yes, the beefed up laptop is most undoubtedly heavy. But that's not the only thing you have to worry about if you plan to make good use of the portability of the laptop. The 300 watt slim tip charger is a tall and heavy adapter. And believe me, the word slim has been carefully crafted to gain a psychological marketing advantage. On its own, it's almost one kilogram, uh, actually 880 grams, but you get the point. So by doing simple math, the total weight to carry becomes something that might bother many weak puny humans. Not me, because of what properties? There are ports on all sides of the laptop. The two powerful USB-C ports are on the left. On the rear, you have one USB-C 135W power delivery port too. And then there are many other ultra useful ports that only come with heavy laptops mostly these days. And on the right hand side, there are other ports and a neat webcam shutter button. There is sadly no USB 4 port on the laptop. The webcam shutter button is very handy, but then it would have been definitely more useful if there was a light somewhere on the laptop indicating whether the webcam hardware is enabled or disabled. Right now, I just have to make a good guess by fiddling with it anyway. And talking about the webcam, well, it has a really shitty quality. And this is how the poop video quality is from the webcam on this laptop. Uh, the room is actually very well lit and you can see how the quality is and how so noisy uh, my face is and there's hardly any detail and if you are in a noisy environment this is how the uh, mic reception would be honestly i'm quite impressed with how the mics behave uh, on this laptop and i am going to use them as my primary set of mics whenever i do video calls uh, on the laptop also the camera doesn't support windows hello unlock functionality the max volume from the speakers is very average. There is no strength in the lows, aka bass. And the vocals also sound a bit hollow and tinny. Can I be your
If you're lazy and want to avoid picking up earphones from your bag or drawer, uh, they will be fine for casual podcasts or YouTube videos, but don't expect them to bring any joy to your ears if you play music through them. However, if you know your sound, then you can either play with the presets, which work great by the way, or you can play with the EQ in this Nahi Mic app, which comes inbuilt into the Vantage app, app within app. There's also this nice sound tracker, which I guess does something that can help you track your enemies in the game who are anyway better than you. There are other features to go through too, but this review is not just about the sound. To quickly check the performance of the different modes, I ran two cycles of Cinebench R20 benchmark and the performance mode is about 10% better than the balance mode. The quiet mode is quite low and I honestly would hate using the laptop on that. So let there be noise and let my earphones protect me. When the laptop is on battery, the laptop itself selects the balance mode, but the performance would be as good as the quiet mode when the laptop is plugged in. The temperature during the performance mode test clearly returned a result that shows that the laptop would definitely hit thermal throttling in summer. It's pretty cold here right now, but even then the temperature crossed 95 degrees Celsius. So yeah, pretty darn hot. So your friend in summer would be the balance mode with that forced but acceptable performance depreciation. This is definitely one of those rare occasions which make us hate the word balance. The all-core frequency stayed at an impressive 4.35 GHz in performance mode while running a full Cinebench R23 test. Chipset consumed 90 watts of power and the maximum temperature touched 91.6 degrees Celsius. This made the Cinebench R23 score touch 14,600, which is pretty good. The only game benchmark I ran on the laptop was Cyberpunk 2077, as I was pretty sure that this one game would be enough to push everything the laptop has to offer, except for its self-respect. If you fancy RTX and want a decent frame rate, then RTX Low with DLSS Balanced will be your best friend on the laptop. But if you fancy even smoother frame rates more than RTX, then the high settings with DLSS Balanced will get you somewhere around 80 FPS with the game in most of the scenarios. Well, I truly believe this is good enough performance from a laptop with its hardware, but just don't dare to even think of playing a game this heavy on the battery mode. In the balance mode of the laptop, turning on the AI option does give a slight advantage to the performance of the game. In fact, this specific game returned a better score than the performance mode in this scenario. So I strongly recommend turning it on or at least experimenting with it if you plan on using the balance mode with the laptop plugged in. To quickly assess the thermals of the RTX 3070, I ran a Fermark stress test at 1440p and the GPU temperature didn't cross 69 degrees Celsius. Nice with a hotspot temperature hovering around 75 degrees Celsius. Yes, it is pretty cold here right now, so expect these temperatures to rise in summer, but I don't think it should have a huge impact on performance. I also quickly compared this laptop against its Intel SKU uh, with the Ryzen 12700H, and thanks to the extra E cores, it performed 16 to 18% better in these two benchmarks, which was honestly expected. But in my assessment, the average power consumption by Intel was around uh, 107 watts, with the peak power consumption up to 120 watts, whereas on AMD it was 88 watts, uh, which was the average, and 90 watts as peak. And due to this, the Intel variant was about 4 to 5 degrees hotter than the Ryzen 7 6800H. You can play with the power limits of the CPU and overclock the GPU a bit too in this nice uh, Lenovo Legion toolkit that is there on GitHub. And also adjust the fan curves, which is just frigging amazing. Well, to be quite frank with you, this app will make Lenovo's Vantage app look like a toddler's puzzle game. During these many benchmarks and testing, the performance mode does make a clear and noticeable sound from the fans. And the noise is slightly more when a CPU dependent task is stressed. The 165Hz 16-inch display covers a good Adobe RGB spectrum, but the DCI-P3 coverage isn't that impressive. Being an IPS display, the viewing angles are great, as with any IPS panel, and the blacks are like any blacks on any IPS panel. They are not absolute blacks and nowhere near to OLED panels, uh, quite obviously. That said, the screen manages to hold colors quite well and will be good for watching content too. The finish on the display is of course matte, so it comes with the natural advantage of subduing the reflections a bit. The Vantage app also has an x right Color Assistant app that lets you control the kind of color calibration you need, but these options are just too darn dark for my blind eyes. 
but they are supposed to be as close as color accurate so at least for assessing vivid images or graphics this can be really helpful the panel is ample bright indoors and in a dimly lit room the brightness could actually hurt my eyes but viewing it outdoor will just be manageable although all the best playing games on this laptop outside without the adapter hooked to it the panel had its areas of ips glow which is typical with ips panels but i really couldn't notice any backlight beating spot so yeah lucky for me the whites are quite accurate on the panel but the colors lean towards generally being slightly oversaturated for that punch and stuff you know the grays are average in terms of uniformity for content creation you can rely on the display but if your job needs extreme color accuracy then i would not recommend this display for it the text clarity is just slightly above average and if you play with text scaling and reduce it even further then they might appear a bit softer you can use clear type text to make them a bit sharper but then this isn't a full fledged solution as the panel itself has a limitation here but the 165 hertz refresh rate uh, does make the screen feel ultra smooth and there's also an overdrive option uh, in the vantage software that gives a slight improvement in trailing or ghosting and without actually affecting the screen brightness i'm honestly quite impressed with the latency performance of the panel even though it's not one of the best because not many of us are die hard fps zero latency gamers the screen is also g sync capable which is again a free advantage the wifi test about 500 mbps on a 1 gbps plan in the same room from my old paperweight router that doesn't support wifi 5 or 6 or 6e The touchpad has a weird position and I didn't like it a bit. It's too left oriented and I kept hitting it unintentionally when I used the laptop with the mouse. It's because this laptop chooses to have this typical layout for these arrow keys for baby gamers I guess. So to fix this silly issue I completely disabled the touchpad. The touchpad however has a good size and the feedback was quite decent, but it definitely doesn't feel like top tier quality touchpads. I think I can pretty easily get used to the layout of the keyboard as the spacing is just perfect for my large hands due to the form factor. The dedicated numpad keys can help you improve your poor math dedicatedly. The keys have a decent amount of travel too. Of course, no way near to a mechanical keyboard if that's what you use the most, but for a laptop it's good enough. There is no fingerprint unlock sensor on the laptop which kind of sucks. The keyboard is also the only part that tries to throw some of RGB through it. but unfortunately the colors from the leds under these keys are very pale overall they don't correspond well to what the software tries to show and are terribly off and even in rooms that are decently lit these lights won't appear to be vibrant but in darker rooms they will do the job they are supposed to do well of lighting the keyboards keys and stuff but the battery really disappointed me the battery drain on this laptop is pretty fast and this is quite expected seeing the laptop can't really reproduce its performance without its slim but heavy adapter in balanced mode with tgpu selected and 70% brightness with speakers not in use the laptop gave a battery backup of just 3 hours with general browsing and doing some of my work side by side and in the same condition testing the battery with igpu selected uh, well that gave a slight bump of 20 minutes more uh, as compared to the dgpu so not much of a gain here really Also selecting iGPU gave me a weird bug with Photoshop so I'm going to passionately avoid it. Running a YouTube video at 1080p consumed 50% of the battery in 1 hour in balanced mode so that was also very weird. And in the quiet mode for the same 50% consumption the video played for 1 hour and 10 minutes more. I am mighty unimpressed. The conservation mode won't charge the battery above 80% so you can save some health of your battery for the long term but turning on rapid charge will disable it. In my testing if you are on the go and really want to juice up the already lame battery on the laptop then definitely use the rapid charge as I was able to charge about 60% in just 22 minutes but I do plan to reset the whole windows and then assess the battery again so I will put my new findings in the pinned comments below if there is any change I will definitely make sure to modify my uh, opinion on the battery of the, of the laptop one huge issue I have encountered and that could very well be a windows 11 bug well it's that the laptop just doesn't wake up from sleep it just loves sleeping the only solution might be resetting windows but nobody got time for that so i'm not allowing the laptop to ever go to sleep at least until it's plugged well if you just go by benchmarks you would notice that the ryzen 6800h falls behind the 12700h by a good 10 to 15% margin even when most of the laptops with these different chips are priced quite similarly but i thought i would go with it just because of the fact that the ryzen platform might uh, give me a better battery performance for the times when i would need to do a task without a power outlet near me but the battery performance at least on my unit has terribly disappointed me
even when i'm not comfortable with something with e course inside of it and micromanaging performance of few of the apps that might just fail to recognize these e course and the performance course and get confused and then i have to use these other third party apps to fix this even with those thoughts in mind i do miss not achieving a higher score uh, in benchmarks for the same amount of money just for the heck of it even when except for cs go uh, both of these chips might perform roughly the same for most of the eyes for most of the games but the performance has been ace so far without any hiccups on this laptop for both work and gaming in my case and noticing that the us versus india pricing doesn't seem to be that different was quite surprising and pleasing to me but for the price i would have definitely loved if the laptop had better set of speakers on it and a less embarrassing web camera but these are clearly cheap ways from brands like lenovo to save pennies uh, from the production line even from their top tier laptops too so if you like my efforts on the video and you choose any of these laptops that i have mentioned in the video then you can support the channel by buying from the amazon affiliate links that i will post below and if you want to discuss more about laptops or tech in general then you can also hop on to our discord server so stay safe humans mubot with a machine on his lap out <laughs>